The truth is, and I've talked about this before, the majority of people here in this room, including me, as much as we'd like to think we're racehorses, and a racehorse might be very exciting and look very good, the truth is um, we are better off being a workhorse. Okay, might not look as good, but in many cases, many of my trades are not in the most sexy of uh, companies. You know, come on, look at tobacco. That was the most out of favor thing at the time. Obviously, it's been trending very, very well over the last 10, 15 years, but it's not, I would say, very, very exciting business. Um, so a racehorse might seem exciting, but the truth is we make money out of the workhorse. And we'll let everybody else go and be racehorses. We'll let the 80% be racehorses, we'll be the 20%, and we'll take all their money. And I've got no sympathy for people that have blown up and lost money spread betting. If they're not using my systems or they're not my client, then let them blow up. And interesting, you know, just so you know, the bookmaker takes the opposite end. Whatever they tell you, they say, oh, they don't. Yes, they do. So what Simon said was called the marked risk account. If they know you're a bad client and they can tell by, obviously, your trading pattern, they just don't. So if you put a trade in, for one pound a point on Amazon, that never touches the market. They just hold it, they just keep it. And again, same with the Jesse Livermore, the bucket shop. Yeah? So they will just take your money on the bet, but they won't place the stock in, they won't copy that trade on Amazon. So they'll take the opposite to you. But some clients, they will. If they hit a certain position, let's say for instance they hit 200 pounds a point on the Dow or whatever, or 2,000 points a point, they can then use the market Dow futures to hedge some of that position. If they know that a client is doing very, very well, they can hedge that position and they can obviously, they'll guarantee to make money because the price that they give you and the price they get in the market is different. So even if I make money, they can make money. But the majority of the time, clients are losing money, they're making money by taking the opposite end. All right, so where do we make most of our money? Back to the racehorse and the workhorse. Well, we can make money in all markets, in no word of a lie, but if you look at my accounts and look at where we've made our big money, it's been trending and quiet. That is where the big money has been made. It's been less volatile, caused us less risk. Now, even in trending and quiet these days, of course, we can get big pullbacks, but that's where we've made the majority of our money. And, of course, you can make money on the short side, but as you know, if you short something, it can only go down to zero. Yeah? Obviously, if we go long something, it can go up three, four hundred, one thousand percent, uh, which we've had in the past. But if we go short something, the worst it can come down is zero. So when I'm saying trending and quiet, of course, there's things that trend down as well. But on this particular you know, example, this is where we make our money, trending and quiet. Great example, British American Tobacco just recently bought Reynolds, which is another stock of mine. This is the US listing, if you're wondering why does that price look different. Obviously, it's listed in the UK, BTI. Domino's Pizza, another big trade for us. If you go back, by the way, when you go to trade on markets, you can always fact check me. If you look at the search box, put pizza in there, or Krispy Kreme donuts, or any word like that, it will show every time I've mentioned that word. Obviously, put apple in, you'll come up quite a bit. But if you just put pizza in tradeonmarkets.com, if anyone's online now, you'll see where we bought Domino's Pizza. And again, it's been a great trend. Lockheed Martin, which is defense. And I wrote about this in my updates. When Trump came in, I said, look, I don't care who wins the next election, it's going to be good news for um, military. So this is an article which was in the Financial Sunday Express, which was 2013. And again, if you search this, it's online. And what I did, I went through my own trading, and I looked at, would it better? You know, I know it sounds horrible, but ethical investing funds, on the whole, don't do very well. They might have great ethics. Now, there's a Norwegian uh, fund. So you know Norway has a lot of income from oil. But what they do with some of those profits, the Norgis Bank or the Norwegian Bank invests in other companies. If you search online and look for the list that they will not invest in, they're normally trades that you might want to have a look to do what? To invest in. Right? Because Norway won't invest in tobacco, they won't invest in guns, they won't invest in arms, they won't invest in you know, a lot of unethical businesses. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm really 
terrible here and all the rest of it. We, um, it's up to you, it's your choice. If you don't invest in tobacco, that's your choice. Um, and when I was with Bill Ackman, you know, he basically said that. He said, look, as an investor, you have a choice of what you invest in. He personally doesn't invest in tobacco. What's interesting, one of his biggest uh, trades is actually very sugar-based. So I don't know which one's worst. Um, and we're going to be talking about that one tomorrow. And you're all going to get a sample as well, so that gets you hooked. Um, but anyway, going back to the story, I basically did a study looking at my own account and other accounts. We made more money by being mean, being unethical, than ethical. Okay, so the green investments. There was only one investment that actually came out quite good. And it's questionable whether this is ethical or not. Um, Whole Foods Markets, which is like a pseudo health food. But if you look in there, they sell a load of stuff with full of calories anyway. Um, so it's questionable whether Whole Foods was ethical or not.